And a big moment earlier today for this young man, Richard Crow. First win for Jackson Walls. He's young, he's fast, and he's the sixth different race winner of the year so far. Just racking them up. Amazing year that it has been. <laughs> yeah, just his eighth career cup round, only 25 races in. COVID interrupted with the postponed calendar last year and only got five rounds of racing in and he missed a couple of them. In fact, he missed the ones up here. So he goes from pole by virtue of winning the previous race. The young Kiwi, another junior driver, Callum Hedge alongside Luke Yulden and David Wall next. Aaron Love thinks he's got something to fight with in this race from the third row of the grid in triple nine. Ryan Sewell's been very solid all weekend long. Talking point, Harry Jones, championship leader, had his margin cut from over 115 points coming into the weekend. It's now just over 60. So there's some work to do for the McElroy driver. And in Morris Proam, the race within a racing career, a cup has been the story of Jeff Emery this weekend. He, Liam Talbot and Stephen Grove have been having really good battles. And the championship leader there having a tough weekend too, Chad, because Sam Shahin starts this one 29th, having led the points coming into the weekend. Thank you very much, Krause. Looking forward to this one. There's never been a clean sweep of the Morris Proam wins here by one driver before. Tough track to get back-to-back -back wins at. Especially this weekend. Yeah, right. It's all been pretty crazy. A little bit of housekeeping. There are a few discussion points after the race. We saw, if you caught the earlier motor race, you saw a little bit of contact between Luke Yulden and Jackson Walls in the final lap. They're battling for the lead. Going into turn three, that was judged a racing incident, so no penalty there. And you flag the yellow flag flying on the restart, and also that was judged to be fine. And Jackson just got the restart done in the nick of time without any worries about going too soon while the yellows were out. So he was all clear and now confident to go for the final 17 lap race. The field still grid up. 30 cars will take part in this one. Adrian Flack. Uh, we saw an incident between himself and Drew Hall around the back of the circuit, and it was actually quite a large impact for Adrian, unseen um, by you and I here in the commentary box. So as a result, he will not take any further part in this race as well. Another contender in Morris Pro-Am having a really challenging weekend. At least he can go and focus on his uh, daughter's campaign next week in the Australian Kart green Championship. Flag. As we get the green flag at the back of the grid, and we get set to bring the noise for the final time. Porsche's on the limiter. The first two have been big, big races with lots of drama. And again, it's a fight between the youth at the front of the field. Walls and Hedge, teenagers, wheel to wheel. Who's got the grip? It's dirty on the inside part of the racetrack. Look at the dust fly. And they all get them stopped and turned in down here in turn two. Still they're side by side. They give each other plenty of room. Now this is where there was contact in that last race. What do we see down here this time in the first lap? This is awesome stuff. They've been side by side through turns one, two, three. Now side by side through four. Bailey Hall spins in the background and still these two. Squabble for the lead, give it to the young Kiwi. For the first time he leads the Carrera Cup race. Took five corners, but Callum Hedge finally gets by. It's the 18 year old Bailey Hall pointing in the wrong direction right at the back of the field, but he'll get going. Lots of respect given between the two of them. Great racing room. It's been beaten into them all weekend and it's really paid off. Great racing. Callum Hedge now in front. Wall second. David Wall gains a spot. He's up to third. Luke Yulden once again struggling to get the TechWorks car off the line. Paddy Achi in front of Aaron Love. So another good start for the Garth Walton racing driver. And Harry Jones up two spots as well. He's just in behind Brad Shields right there in car 12. Had some aero damage in that last race. Did Harry Jones really hard for him to get moving through the field. Desperate to try and get some positions made and keep that points lead healthy ahead of the bend. The next round of the championship. So we reached halfway through this season already. Here comes Aaron Love. Oh, he's really struggling with that brake pedal to get that car stopped. Gonna try and bite off a bit more real estate down there. Get the move done on Devash and Pagliacci. Brad Shields having his best weekend in the Tilton Porsche this weekend. He's fighting inside the top 10. Championship leader in his mirrors. He's just so confident under brakes down there at turn two. And they've all been battling this weekend with brake feel and working out when the inside front in particular is locking. And they're saying, we can't really pick it up until we see the dashboard light up saying, oh, you're locking your brake. Oh, man, that was, I thought it was Shields. It was Russell with the big slide. He got the curb at five and slid all the way through at turn six. Just got that car pulled back up. A race winner at Winton. Haven't seen him back towards the front of the field since that weekend. 
Well, it's the story of the championship, isn't it? That you can be good one weekend and winning races and right at the front of the field on the round podium. The next weekend, you're 12th, but you've only dropped two tenths. Wall's having to defend pretty heavily from Wall. And in behind them is Luke Yulman. So two young rising stars of the sport, two vastly experienced drivers make up our top four. And Wally looking really aggressive. The lights flashing on the monochrome. Painted Dixon Porsche from Wall Racing. Is there room to squeeze down the inside at turn two? There's not because the objective car covers the line. This will be nerve-wracking moments right now for Jackson Walls. He's got some experience tucked in behind him. Both drivers who have been on the podium in supercars before, won trophies, been there, done that. Particularly in Luke Gilden's case, a winner of the great race itself with Erebus back in 2018. Jackson Wall on the podium with Gary Rogers Motorsport, former co-driver of Scott McLaughlin. And then behind them, Aaron Love, who's racing Super Cup and also doing Prairie Cup in France this year. So loads of experience bearing down on Manny's second in this race. And then back to this pack, mid-pack scrap for 13th, queuing up behind Angelo Missouri, who's also doing the Dunlop Series. He gets straight out of this car, and straight into his Nissan Altima from that white motorsport. It's touching on Aaron Love. He's off to France for his next round, uh, which will be Porsche Super Cup at the French Grand Prix at Paul Ricard in a couple of weeks, and then back to Oz. Shaheen gets down the inside of Tim Miles and then back to Carrera Cup France. He's reasonably confident he'll be back for another at least one round later in the season here in Australia. He says, all I'm trying to do is keep busy. I want to be in a car every weekend if I can. It's so important at this point in his career just to get laps, and that's what he's doing this weekend. For a moment, balls, he's gone wide. Never give an opportunity to David Wall. He will be the first one to strike, and Yulden's going to follow him through. And this could change the round complexion because Love gets passed as well. Big swing and momentum. That's a brave spot. Oh. Look at he turns Yulden around. Is that a square up for the Grand Prix? Yulden sent Love at round one. Long memories race car drivers do have, and Yulden's facing the wrong way in Townsville. Hopefully got the clutch in and kept it running so he can get it turned around. Better look. Bit of lock on the Hira Hubby car that what a weekend. I was saying how it's going to change the round results because the man to benefit from Jackson Walls dropping back through the field was Luke Yulden to get him onto the podium. But that all changed very quickly. Here's the start. Almost even between the two of them. I'd love to see the 0 to 100 times they measure a good start with. See how they compare. It was just a hedge. I love the respect between the two of them as they ran through turn two and three and into four. Oh, man, it's Mad Max stuff down there oh. from the in-car, or outside car, I should say, for Scott Taylor. You can drive through it, Cole. <laughs> I know it. the smoke. He was uh, nearly inside someone else's car down there at turns two and three. Oh, that was great between those two young guys. And this is Bailey Hall. So it'd be interesting to see if there was contact there. I put money on the fact that race control after these replays to find out what happened. <laughs> see if there could be any in-race penalties to apply. This is on board with Christian Pancioni. Thoughts and feelings? Hectic. It's a great example <laughs> of exactly how wild it is at the start of a motor race. It's a really good way to explain it. And this, great bit of racing, but just offline, Jackson Walls, and it had to get on the brakes as Luke Yulden fired in. And that would continue on. And uh, once they managed to sort it all out, that was an eye racing moment there, just holding down the escape button for a moment. Oh, and then that was the contact. Reasonably cut and dry, I would have thought there with Aaron Love into the back of Luke Yulden, who unwittingly is turned around just slightly offline, but it's not generally an overtaking opportunity. Well, for Aaron Love, who's not fighting for a championship so far this year, he won't be all that fussed. He'll be sitting third on the road. We'll call it one all for what happened earlier in the year between those two now. Porsche action, can't take your eyes off it here in Townsville. Callum Hedge leading the way. You might call it one all. I'm not sure Luke Gildon will see it like that. <laughs> want the tie break. <laughs> when do you get back, Aaron? Yeah, correct. <laughs> yeah. Back is just safe. Yeah. It's a pretty awkward little moment. And unless you're a long way down the inside, they're very difficult to overtake at that point of the racetrack. So it's an unfortunate incident and it will change the round podium. But in the box seat now, from the points perspective, is Callum Hedge. 
So with Walls running second, he was still in line to win the round overall, take the weekend the most points. But now having dropped back to fourth position, Hedge is in the box seat. Having said that, race control will be looking at Aaron Love, who's currently third, so there could be a time penalty coming his way. Just a topsy turvy mad kind of year in Porsche painted Nixon Career Cup Australia. We're looking for our fourth different round winner from four rounds so far. And we will get that one way or another with the drivers that are still in contention. On board with Dylan O'Keefe, who's been on the back foot since picking up that penalty right for the very first corner, first lap yesterday. Which is a real shame because he had an awesome start, went three wide, muscled his way to second, and then uh, got turned, or got, got done, I should say, for turning Aaron Love around down there at turn two. Carl Reinlo, the driving standards advisor, the man who has to make that decision as to who was at blame. And on that occasion, it went the direction of Dylan O'Keefe. Two miles has had a spin. That car pointing back in the right direction and straight back into the fight. And it's just the nature of this kind of racing, especially with the progressive grid, where you, you start the following race where you finished the race before. So if you have a bad race one, it affects your entire weekend. And it's so difficult to pass, so difficult to work your way through in a field that's so intensely stacked. 18 pro-class cars covered by eight tenths of a second in qualifying. And even in pro-am, top six were covered by about six tenths. So working your way through as a pro driver through the Morris pro-am runners is difficult let alone getting to some of the real elite level talent at the front of the field, Shahin and Miles. Oh, well, that was the second attempt at that pass. We saw it down at turn 11 earlier. Smoke him if you got him. For Miles here, <laughs> kept the boot into it. Yeah, it was a long way down and a lot of curb though, which they'll oh. look at as well. Hang on a minute. Oh, this, so, this a bit earlier. Oh. Wow. They both caught that. So that was not the second time, but the third time that was. that pass was on. So turns 11 and then there, and then also down at turn two. Oh. Now, new lap record, David Wall, 113.65. So taking a tenth off Luke Gilman's lap record set earlier this morning. So the speed is up. I suspect there'll be a fairly robust discussion between Tim Miles and Sam Shahid post-race. Well, off the back of Darwin, it was Sam Shahid and Liam Talbot who were having words. Do take this very seriously. They have lives away from racing, the Morris Pro Am guys. But if this is their game of golf, it's a game of golf that they want to win badly every time they roll it out onto the golf course. This course, a street course. Callum Hedge leads the way here in Townsville. Teenager from New Zealand is running for the hills. He's got David Wall. In close contact, Aaron Love sits third, but with a potential question mark over the incident between he and Luke Gilden. Now, if Love gets a penalty, could that promote Jackson Walls high enough to potentially win the round? That'll be the big question right now. A lot of that will depend, I think, on whether David Wall can get to the back of Callum Hedge and pass him. And last time around, that looked like the story because David Wall reset the lap record here at Townsville with a 113.65. He is absolutely flying. So a couple of fairly dramatic moments in Morris Pro, and that's Sam Shahin into Tim Miles at seven. So big <laughs> contact, lots of curb. That's rally cross. It's ridiculous. Uh, <laughs> lots of opposite lock from Shahin, and uh, Miles goes to the grass. So they both got away with that one. But Chad, that wasn't the end of the story. No, there was a little postscript on this one. Next lap, about two k's away from where the last contact happened. Just putting a full stop on that battle for now until the next round of the championship, yeah. at, which is at uh, the, the Bend. Bend. <laughs> yeah, home ground advantage, that one. Now, Jeff Emery still doing a very nice job at the moment. On for the first ever clean sweep of Morris Pro-Am here in the streets of Townsville. And very big for his championship, especially with Sam Shahin a long way down the order, who came into the weekend leading the Carrera Cup race within a race. I don't think we've had anyone go pole to a clean sweep of win so far this year. Well, Harry Jones side by side with Brad Shields. It's a squeeze through there. Racing room given. That's uh, David Russell correction in the EMA Motorsport car. Well, one all there. Yeah. They do look pretty similar. And here comes Max Vidal into this fight. Big, aggressive South Aussie. Bit of Speedway experience. He's now made that move over to work full time for Techworks 
He's in the tyre power colours. He wants to be in this fight. Now he came up through the ranks in sprint challenge. Sure, bit of a hurry up here. Into the rear bumper. It's on in the background here with Pancioni as well, and that's with Simon Fallon. He's had a rotten weekend of luck, Simon, with genuine car speed and the qualified fifth. Harry very wide. This is a pretty critical race, I think, in the context of his championship. He's already thrown a lot of points away compared to David Wall in a championship point of view. But a safe seventh or eighth or ninth here, he's running ninth at the moment, could be the difference. But he cannot afford to be turned around or pointing in the wrong direction. Oh. But Doe had it all crossed up under brakes in the tyre power car. Big slide. And that will open the door for O'Keefe in the Dexion racer to go through. And Ange Brazuris would like to think he can get a spot as well. I wonder if the championship leader has any idea how close he was to being backwards down there at turn two. Fidel's thing was locked up, sliding its way down the road. And that was close as well. Former Sonic driver up against the current Sonic driver. And they're still fighting it out. Really feisty. That was a huge moment. Gee, that could have been championship defining stuff had Jones been speared down there at turn two. Just as we were talking about it, it's so important that Harry just finishes, just has to accumulate it. So he's 119 points in front. He gets past Russell, so that's key. There's 119 points coming into the championship as these two continue to box on. Right now, Wall gets 138. Harry Jones gets 55. It's a huge swing, but he's got to minimise that damage. <laughs> Mazuris clear for the moment. Simon Fowler now just in behind. So there's a lot going on there. There's a battle for the lead building. There's still six laps to go. Flat out Porsche Carrera Cup racing. <laughs> when it's good, it's properly good, isn't it? So that second race today, we had a, a rookie teenager fighting for the win up against an experienced supercars driver. We've got the exact same scenario this time by, and they were changing the names up. So this one, it's Callum Hedge, and he's going to be trying to fend off David Wall. Aaron Love sits third. Jackson Wall's not quite with the same speed he had in race two. A little bit of a gap back to Devash and Pateach, who's having a really good race inside the top five. And Harry Jones is now ahead of Dave Russell. Desperate to try and get onto the back of the Ryan Sewell car. Get some more points back. Just a bit of word from race control. A big post-race investigation for that David Wall. Um, sorry, the contact with 128 that was down <laughs> early in the race. That's Dave, the... That's Dar Woods and Bailey Hall. Definition of a full send then from Max oh. Vidal to the inside of Andrew Missouri's. Had that thing rolled up and sent. Oh, is there an issue here for Liam Talbot? Who's he slows in car 27 for Wall Racing. Yep. And he's losing a lot of positions against... Oh, he's got radiator damage in the left front. That car is losing coolant and will surely be coming to the pits this time by. And pretty light contact can punch a hole in the radiator in the front of these cars. The radiator's mounted in behind. This continues to box on a little bit further back. Brad Shields under pressure. Ryan Sewell and Devash and Paddy actually now going side by side into three. And Sewell gets that position for El Bamba Motorsport, the SP Tools car. It's had a really good weekend. Oh, and Simon Fallon stopped on the road. Third time in three races this weekend. Has it been a fine weekend for Fallon as he gets half a race and we'll try and get out of that? He's good. Free to continue. Beat Cooper Murray to the Sprint Challenge Championship a couple of years ago in a final round showdown. Cooper had a, a clutch issue in his car and stalled and Fallon was there for Sonic to pick up the pieces. Heartbreaking for one, delight for the other. And then had a year out of the sport, Simon Fallon, just with some finance issues, no budget. Put the funding together last year to get back in Carrera Cup. Just looking for a clean weekend. That's Liam Talbot into pit lane. And his day done. And that is another Morris Pro-Am contender having drums. They're struggling to get that door open. I wonder if he's had a, a slight brush of the fence somewhere. Meanwhile, <laughs> and that is what happened with Fallon. Whoa, Pacioni. Whoa, man, that was pretty wild stuff. So they all tried to miss ah. the 777 car. Okay, so he was going down the inside of Max Fido and lots of curb oh. on the inside and did that all on his own. Isn't that fascinating? From the first camera angle, that looked like every day of the week he'd been absolutely served up. Yeah, served by Pancioni's car. I think there was an onboarder. Yes, we <laughs> we just absolutely <laughs> executed him here from the commentary box. The VCM performance <laughs> team can... Uh, Deep breath after that one. Yep. No dramas for young Christian, <laughs> who qualified really well. 
but got caught up in that turn two melee yesterday and he's now back to 13th place. Okay, fight on here. Let's check out some lap times this time by Krause, who has got the speed. Hedge, pace, 114.3 and a 114.2 to the man chasing him. Three to go. Let's sort this out. We know how good David Wall is at looking after tyre life. Will that be a factor here at the end? And he's the kind of guy, and his career in Crow Cup is replete with examples of him finishing second and just accumulating the points. And if there's no opportunity, he's not going to risk a massive move to try and pass Callum Hedge and grab the win. He's smart enough to know that he can finish second, come out of it with a huge haul of points. He knows the championship context with Harry Jones as well. His nearest rival, who was a long way up the road and isn't now, he's very, very smart. And sure, we want to see him have a massive send and have a big crack at the race lead. Oh. But unless there's an error from the driver in front, which there almost was there in turn eight, it won't be uh, a massive move, you think, from David Wall. Watch him go full send now. Yeah, yeah after saying all, all, all that. Yeah. Well, it is a big points gap. You're not going to make up a massive points gap finishing second every week. You will need to win some races from here to the end of the year at the Gold Coast. Saul puts on the pressure here. Saul and Shields fighting it off at turn 11. Harry Jones trying to chase them down, and here comes Dave Russell. Inside of Paddy Archie, who's all of a sudden just falling backwards through the field. He was fifth a moment ago. Now he's ninth. Not sure what's happening there to the Garth Walden racing car. Two to go. So Brad Shields in fifth, about to set his third personal best race result of the weekend. So his pre previous best coming into this was ninth on two occasions at Hidden Valley, running fifth now. Uh, recently got engaged just before the Darwin race as well, so congratulations to him and his lovely fiance yesterday down in the lounge, enjoying uh, the hospitality and the sunshine of Townsville. Yeah, oh boy, that's a big old lockup down there to the inside of Mark City. I think that's the first time I've said Mark City's name this weekend. Yep, he's had a pretty quiet one, unlike every other driver <laughs> in the entire field. <laughs> All the power to him. Yes. And uh, also, as we start the last lap, would, uh, I know everyone in the Porsche family, speaking of how good the hospitality is, would like to send a big farewell to uh, one of the most loved characters in the paddock. Matt Lena, who's been the operations chief Porsche Motorsport Australia since 2014. This is her final round, sad moment for everyone in the paddock. Looks after everyone so well down at Porsche Land. So this is her final round and certainly wish her all the best for future endeavours. She will be missed. And how about this for a first time win as Callum Hedge crosses the finish line. El Bamba Motorsport on top once again. And the young Kiwi is home for his first win. And he is going to be a name to remember. Mark that one down, Callum Hedge. We've seen plenty of him in our coverage of the supercars over the years. Started off racing the Sangyong Utes of all things. And then we saw him race the Toyota 86s at Pukekohe. Now he's full time here in Australia. And he wants to be the next El Bamba. And he's going about it the right way. A win here in the Porsches in Townsville. Well done to Callum Hedge, just 18 years of age. And they're fighting the whole way through to the chequered flag. Congrats also to Jeff Emery, the first ever clean sweep of the Morris Pro-Am class here at Townsville. And that is a special moment in this young man's career. We've had wins for Clay Richards in the Toyotas. Now we've added Callum Hedge as a first-time winner. Jackson Wall's a first-time winner. The youth, it's coming and it's showing exactly what's promising for the future. Two drivers on the podium for the first time in their career cup career this weekend in Hedge and Jackson Walls. Brad Shields, personal best. Aaron Love, great to see him in the mix. Good weekend for Ryan Saw. Harry Jones salvaged a seventh out of all of that for McElroy. David Russell was eighth. And you can see down the page in 16th position is Jeff Emery. He's the Morris Pro Am winner in front of Stephen Grove. who will be second for the weekend. And Rodney Jane gets himself up to third in that race. Some big stories to tell further back. Sam Shaheen has had a shocker. Simon fell on the same, and Luke Yildon will be pretty fired up after that one, having run in the top four all day. He ended up being turned around.